Hey guys, Rob here with RJ Gaming. Uh, I got another RC update video for you here on the Capra. I wanted to go through some of the other uh, upgrades that the truck has gone through. And uh, just to start off, <clears throat> I actually got uh, some overdrive gears for the front portals. Um, I was out there the other day, our Friday crawl with Pat and Richie. And uh, we we're doing some tire testing, got some J concepts out there, got some pro lines out there. Um, Richie had a little bit of work that he needed to do on his rig, so Pat and I jumped in and helped him fix that, finish it up. Um, he actually got some tusks, super rare find for him, um, and uh, got those mounted. They're 2.2s on his rig. And I got ruptures, which I was really lucky to obtain, which I think I mentioned in another video uh, that, I, that I have. And I uh, also got the megalithics recently, which are in front of you guys, mounted on the truck. But we'll go through and talk a little bit about what's changed here since the last time you saw it. So first thing we'll talk about, I guess, is the portal overdrive gears. These are from uh, Team Garage Hack, which uh, is a little, oh, my little thing fell here. Look at this sticker. I just want to show you guys. Check this out. I haven't put it on the truck, but <laughs> instead of OnlyFans, overdrive fans. I thought that was freaking cool. So this is a little Team Garage Hack sticker. Uh, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, I believe it's Team Garage. Yeah, I think it's one of their stickers. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe somebody else made it. But I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, Team Garage Hack. Kind of they're on Facebook and uh, drive tested and what's it say? RC mechanic approved. I think is what that says. And. Uh, it's kind of smaller. I always like this. A lot of these really cool, innovative products, I love an RC because it's the small guys. You know, like uh, the 3D printed inserts, a lot of them are smaller guys, like the squids that are in these tires right here. Um, Team Garage Hack, like West Desert Wheeler. A lot of these guys, you know, they're, they're smaller, either one dude or like a couple dudes, and that... Uh, are just trying to make the crawling uh, community better and better rigs and just they come up with concepts and like well I really wish that this would be like this and then they go ahead and they make it and people support them and it just it makes the hobby better and I think that's just so cool that we can do that as a community um, so Team Garage Hack came up with overdrive gears for the Capra uh, and also the SCX10 and basically I was just trying to start with something simple I didn't want to get into like selectable overdrive in the transmission or trying to bust open the drive shaft. So I was like, yeah, something simple, something that's quick to throw on. It was $30. I think it was 29 bucks. And then shipping was, you know, like five, six bucks. Um, shout out to Key City Hobby. Uh, I believe it's Frederick County, Maryland. This is a small hobby shop. Um, well, small, relatively small hobby shop. And uh, he's kind of, it was like the one place I really found that was easy to use. Their ordering was easy. Um, super honest about shipping, like how long stuff's going to take. It was actually kind of hysterical because in there it was like USPS and it was like standard mail. And it's like, we warned you, it's slow as shit, you know, and like it might take fucking forever for it to come to you. And then like USPS a little quicker, but still shit. You know, we warned you, don't blame us, you know, like. Just kind of warning you, like, hey, this could take forever. I picked UPS ground. It was a little more. It was like two or three bucks more, I think. But UPS is so reliable. I said, I just would rather do that. And it was. It was really quick. It shipped on Monday, and it was here Wednesday, so two days. Um, I'm in upstate New York. He's in Maryland, so pretty pretty easy transport up to here. But um, really, really a cool little hobby shop. He sent me some super shafty stickers, which I thought some of these are actually kind of cool looking. I like the super shaft shafty uh, bomb proof and then he's got some key city hobby you know he's got the sticker there and he sent me an extra one here uh the the overdrive fan sticker which is my favorite <laughs> i just think that's so funny uh, i'm gonna find a place for that and then he sent me some candy it's so freaking cool i got some sour patch in there it's just neat when you order from some smaller you know you order from amazon it's like oh here's your shit you know but like you order from somebody at a smaller place and it's like oh he throws in a couple pieces of candy some stickers um with the product you know i only spent 30 bucks but just showing like hey i appreciate your support supporting a smaller hobby shop um just as like a little thank you throwing a couple candies in there to me that that really makes me feel good that i'm doing the right thing and supporting them and so thank you key city hobby for helping me upgrade my capra 
But anyway, um, Team Garage Hack makes three different levels from what I could find. There's like mild, I think there's, I don't know what the middle one's called, maybe moderate, and then this is wild. And they recommended the wild for the Capra. Um, it's basically 30% overdrive. I think they said something about it's 30 three percent but it equates out to be 30 percent after you like do all the math i'm not doing all that shit i just basically say it's like 30 percent it's the most overdrive they offer um for just a portal swap now those of you from aren't familiar you start at the motor you know that spins your transmission down inside here uh it goes out your drive shafts out of your transmission so these black dudes here down into your diffs which is these pumpkin here that we were talking about uh, the steering servo the other day clearing the diffs have gears that spin out to your um, on your axles, and then on a portal system, you can see there's like this little um, spot right here that it drops down. It gives you more clearance under your axle, and all that does is there are two different gears in the portal. There's a lower gear, which is this guy, the bigger gear, and then there's a smaller gear that comes off of the actual axle. So this this gear, this little dude, comes off of the axle and is spinning and the teeth are lining up into this guy's gear and spinning him, which then in turn spins the tire. So it portals, I call it portaling down because you've got your gears kind of stacked in there like so, and you're like this. So your axle's up on the high one and then the big boy's down on the bottom and that gives you that extra clearance, it's about an inch, which is amazing in um, crawling because any extra clearance is amazing and is good to get over stuff. So one of the places you can add overdrive is your portals or are your portals in the front so all you do literally just take tire off take the portal cover off and these gears just sit in there so you just take the gears out and these are my stock gears and they're all greased up from my my grease gun and so i just took them out it took literally i mean you take the tire off you take the little nut that holds the tire on and split the portal cover out, you know, with four screws, swap your gears, grease them up, and put everything back together. It took probably five minutes per side. So 10 minute thing. And now I have 30% overdrive in this rig. So super simple as far as like where you're putting the overdrive versus going into the diff or trying to do it in the transmission. Um, maybe someday if I like it, but I wanna use it sometime, but not all the time, selectable is probably like the gold standard because you, you can just have the best of both worlds. Um, there's mixed feelings from what I've read on overdrive, whether it does anything or not in my brain, 29 bucks to try something that could be helpful. It's not a huge price to pay. Um, and if I don't like it, I can just throw the stock gears back in and call it a day. <laughs> the cool thing about overdrive too, if you guys think about it, you can overdrive the front, you can underdrive the rear, you can overdrive the rear, um, to match. So like, let's say you too, put too much overdrive in the front. You could then overdrive the rear mildly to meet in the middle. Like you can you can do different things. You can leave the front alone and underdrive just the rear, which in turn overdrives the front. You know, if you overdrive the front and you're running stock in the rear, remember your your top speed when you're pinned, your fronts are gonna be spinning way quicker than your stock top speed, but your rears are gonna be the same. If you underdrive the rear, your fronts are gonna spin the same as stock, but your rears are gonna spin slower. So you're gearing down. So you kind of have to find like, what do I care? You know, what do I want? For me, I have a Hobby Wing, as you guys know, the Hobby Wing Fusion Pro in here. The the control is so small. I'm not worried about this tire spinning 30% faster because I have so much control. I haven't really noticed a difference. I did take it out. You can see the tires a little wet to test it. Um, just do a couple little quick runs with it. And so far, so good. Um, I can't take it out back because it's one in the morning when I normally am working on these things, but at least out on the back porch and stuff and little obstacles I could do in here. It's pretty cool how the overdrive works. Um, so again, front tires are basically just spinning quicker than the back tires. The theory is if you're on a really steep slope like this, the front tires spinning quicker are supposed to pull better. Like if you're, if you're on a hook spot here, you know, your front tires can spin quicker than the rear. So instead of the rear spinning and pushing your front end over and flipping you over backwards, your front tires can spin faster and pull you over while your rear tires are kind of just like, sort of like just supporting the truck. They're not really trying to push the truck up, they're supporting it. Um, but some of the theories I've heard and some of the videos I've watched, if you don't have enough front traction, 
your front tires are just going to sit there and spin and your rears are still going to kick you over backwards eventually because you got to give it more throttle, more throttle, and then you're going to have the same problem. Um, I've also seen some videos where people really like overdrive. The one thing I really think is cool about overdrive is your front steers tighter when you're in, when you have overdrive because your front tires, if you think about it, they're spinning quicker than your rear. So when you turn your tires, they're pulling you that direction. 30% quicker than your rears are pushing you. So instead of, you know, a lot of time when you turn a truck and you feel the front, like you turn it like this, but the truck keeps kind of walking this way because your your rear tires are shoving it forward. When you have overdrive, you can just, the truck just pulls and turns. So it turns way tighter of a turning radius. So if you're trying to find a gate and line the truck up or a very particular line, the overdrive is very handy for that. I notice it just inside on the floor. When I turn the front tires, the truck actually just turns. It's not trying to like wander the other direction because I have more pull in the front. Um, some people say certain obstacles, you have problems where your rear tires can't work hard enough because your fronts are just spinning. Um, that can be an issue. Also, your battery life is a little worse because one of your axles is spinning quicker than your other, so you're gonna have a little less efficiency. Also, your tire wear, tread wear will be quicker because if you think about it, your front tire is always spinning faster than your rear. So one tire is actually going to be spinning, you know, and I don't want to say slipping. Either this tire is going to be dragging that tire or that tire is going to be pushing this tire and this tire is going to be spinning. So either way, tread wear is a little bit quicker too. So there's some pros and cons with the with the overdrive. But I said for $29, if I take it out there and I absolutely love it, I can just leave it in. And if I don't, I can take it out. I can also un, um, overdrive the rears a little bit. If I think it's too much overdrive, but I want to still have a little, I can play around with the gearing for pretty cheap and pretty quick. You know, like I go out there and hate this and like this isn't going to work. I come back in and 10 minutes later, I'm back to where I was when I started. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it so far, but I haven't really gotten it out on the rocks to really, truly put it to the test. So uh, we will see. The other thing I want to talk about, Megalithics. They are the new J-Concepts tire green compound. Holy shit, these are awesome tires. Um, I love my ruptures too. They just came and I've had them out a couple times, probably probably a dozen times or so. I've had the ruptures out on the rocks and the ruptures are amazing too. Like they're a great tire. I think the holds are a great tire. Um, I also think that the the um, Mickey Thompson Baja Pros are pretty sweet. My brother had those. Uh, Pat had those out there. Those are pretty awesome, real aggressive, thick tread. Um, and just a, kind of a, each tire had its own pros and cons, you know. The ruptures seem to be more of a tire that like to, I'm going to call it maneuverability, where you're up on a rock and you want to go a little bit this way. You can turn the ruptures and they will take you there on that rock. Um, for drive, your Mickey Thompson Baja Pros are so good because the, the tread's so thick. Driving straight, it just has tons of forward drive. Um, the holds, tons of forward drive, because they're, again, those thicker treads. Um, the cool thing about Megalithics that I like, um, oh, before I forget to mention, my brother Richie got 2.2 tusks. I think I may have mentioned it earlier in the video, but if I didn't, pretty sweet that he got those. And uh, those have tons of forward drive and some good maneuverability as well. They're a great all-around tire. Unfortunately, he didn't get to test them a ton because it was getting dark by the time we got his truck put together. Um... The megalithics are kind of a cross if a rupture and a tusk had a baby. You'll see there's like a little bit of rupture in this tire. So like all these little, I'll try to go like this so you can see, all these little treads like this guy and that guy, kind of like mini treads if you will. You know the ruptures kind of have that sort of bar mini tread thing going on. Um, and a tusk sort of has that thicker, kind of like the Baja Pros but not quite as aggressive, more of like a bar tread kind of thing going on, like like a little beefier. This has both. It has the rupture kind of bar style tread, but then it has the tusk. There's like that diamond thing going on in the middle, like right here, this, this little lugger here, very tusk-ish. Um, but then you've got like a bar kind of rupture thing going on, like this more looks like a rupture, like this bar right here. So... A little bit of both, but what's cool is like there's all this really neat, like the sidewall is really aggressive. There's all these little divots and stuff to grab. And if you look, there's little micro, there's my screwdriver, 
But look at these little micro, see them all? Look at on the in between, there's like little micro imprints. And even along here, like these little, like here's some here and some here and this tread, there's actually like a tread and then there's these micro treads too. They're along this bar right here, see them? And I think it's just so cool. It's, it's one of the only tires I've seen that look this crazy. Like it just, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Um, and there's not a really, you can't be like, like with the holds, it's just like poof, big, like a tractor tire, big bars, you know, oh, that's big four drive, you know, this thing is kind of confusing when you look at it. It's like, I don't know what it's going to do, but it looks like it's going to grab some shit, <laughs> you know? Um, when I went out and I drove them for the first time, I tried not to get them in the dirt. I tried to just get right onto the rock and we, there's this one particular rock that's pretty steep. It's all slate, uh, very, very slippery, not a lot to for anything to bite onto it's pretty pretty uh smooth and oh my god these things just went up the top of them a little little bit of uh, maneuvering i had to do and then at the top where this truck has never been able to pull itself over a particular spot it just kind of did it and i was like holy shit <laughs> um again not the end all be all though because you know you got to give stuff up to gain stuff not one tire is going to do everything perfectly, or otherwise everybody would just have that tire. Um, so you got to kind of find the tire that works for you, the tire that does what you want it to do. Um, I like the Megalithic because it does a little bit of the maneuverability plus a little bit of the Ford Drive. I did put the um, my Rupture Squid um, inserts. They're 3D printed Squid inserts. The Rupture is a, a taller tire, so the Squids are actually too tall for the Megalithic. But I want to try it before I buy squids for this tire. So they're actually, they're doing pretty good. They they squeeze down fine. You know, like I can squeeze the tire down to there. And um, they're kind of, there's uh, brass rings in here that are vented. So you can hear the tire hissing and then blowing itself back up. So I think they're squishy enough to let the tread kind of do what it's got to do. I want to take them out on the rocks, obviously. They might be too stiff. Um, and try the 3D uh, printed inserts. I had stock foams on it when I took it out there, and they did pretty well, but then when I got on the side hill, those stock foams, you know, they, they crush right down to nothing, and the, the capper wanted to roll, flip over a lot. It was roly-poly, so I like that about the 3D printed. They kind of let the tire, they let the tire kind of squeeze down and do what it's got to do here on this part, but then as you move down the insert, it gets stiffer, and like right around the rim, there's a very stiff kind of part of it. You really can't. I mean, I can... I'm squeezing as hard as I can, as far as I can go. So it doesn't let you let the tire just completely moosh and flip over down the hill. So you've got kind of different, there's really soft up here. Middle is kind of like, see, I can still push it down through the middle, but it's stiffer. And then the inner ring is super stiff. So it's almost like a three stage. Um, squids for the ruptures, by the way, incredible. If anybody's looking for a 3D printed insert, I've had them on the rupture now f since I got them, basically. I got the squids a couple days after I got the ruptures. Man, they are nice. I mean, stock foams, don't get me wrong. Like, a stock foam is fine. It's open cell. You know, it is it is what it is. Tons of Ford Drive, roly-poly on the side hills. Some people like a stock foam, and I actually don't mind it either. You just have to be really careful on the side hills. But the printed, the 3D printed inserts, you lose maybe a little bit of Ford Drive because there's a little bit more stiffness but you gain so much more. And the thing is, when you point the tire, kind of like with the overdrive, it just the truck goes where the tire is pointed. With a stock foam, there's a lot of, if you're looking at a tire kind of like from here, there's a lot of moosh this way and this way, where the tire can kind of just moosh over. And you get this, you get this sort of like sloppy front end because you go to turn and your tire mooshes. So it's sort of like, I'm calling it mooshing, Definitely not a technical term. That's definitely a robism. I, I'm sorry, but it mooshes, you know, it kind of just this, I can't do it because it's 3D printed, but it, it sort of kind of just goes flat and folds and it makes your front end sort of just do this, you know? So instead of going that way, you're kind of like mooshing over this way and you're sliding and there's all these problems. 3D printed insert, you point the tire and it goes. Just really, really nice for maneuvering. So, Megalithics, check, overdrive, check, oh, steering servos, oh my god, the nightmare in my week, holy shit, 
So I, before we went out and crawled together, I had a little bit of a gut feeling to go try my capper out on the rocks and just do a little test run. And the front steering servo decided that was when it was going to give me the big old middle finger and just not work anymore. So the two spectrum uh, servos you'll see are not on this truck anymore. On the front, we have an AGFRC 40 kilogram um, high torque. Oh, let's see here. I'm trying to get it to focus. Sorry, guys. Oh, there we go. It's a high torque 40 kilogram um, steering servo. You can get them right on Amazon. They're about, I think they were sold with 75 or 80 bucks. I've been watching videos on Hello RC, particularly one video where he upgrades his Capra, this four wheel steer model to this, with this steering servo. And here's the deal with this is it's not a Reefs. Reefs are really expensive, but it's also not like a $30 cheapo. Kind of in the middle, high torque, metal gears, good bearings, um, really nicely built. I'll tell you that it comes with the steering servo horn, but you, you have to be careful of with this horn is I had to cut it with the Dremel. You'll see right here. It actually has two mounting holes, one here and one below. I actually cut the, bolt, the lower hole, and the reason is, again, those damn diff bumpkins on this capper. Look at how close this thing gets. Look at the shadow. <laughs> I mean, it barely clears that, that steering uh, pumpkin, the diff pumpkin. So, be prepared if you want to use the AGFRC horn, you're going to have to cut that. Other than that, it has great, um, the metal is really nice, the body. The cord is actually really quality too, like this cord is beefy. The thing is a monster. It just feels really thick and like it's not going to fall apart on you. And then it comes with these little rubber, I call them like grommets or insulators. So around all the wings where it mounts onto your servo uh, mount. Those actually push the servo out this way more towards my hand, which lets that horn clear, which is nice for the Capra. Without that, this sits back further and this will hit this diff pumpkin. But what's nice is it's really secure, like moving the whole truck. I can't even barely wiggle the servo there like that because it's a plastic mount. That's all I can do with it. So it's very stable, very sturdy. And it's fast and it's quiet. I cannot stand noisy, basically noisy anything. Noisy motors, noisy steering servos. This thing is quiet. I'll throw the rig on real quick and I'll show you guys how quiet it is. And then, so I crawl with um, you know the boys. I get this upgraded. And I go out <clears throat> yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And I go to crawl and I'm using the rear steer. And all of a sudden, the truck rolls down the hill. Rear steer's turned, and I hear, I'm like, what the hell? The steering servo I moved from the front and put on the rear, that one blew. So both stock servos went within the same week. They're junk. Everybody says they're junk. I was expecting it. I was like, damn it, I just spent whatever, 75, 80 bucks on that AGFRC, which I'm very happy with in the front, but I don't want to drop another 75, 80 dollars for the rear. Shit. So I have a, um, I have a slash, Traxxas slash that I wasn't using. And I remember back in the day, I snapped the steering in that sucker and put this high tech in it. Everybody was recommending the high tech for it. Now the high tech is definitely not as nice as uh, the AGFRC, but it's definitely not as shitty as the Spectrum stock servo either. Really cool looking wire, again, quality. Um, and I took my horn that I had on the front, the axial horn that I had bought, instead of money going to waste, and put that baby right back here. So we have two metal steering horns now, instance so no plastic, which I like. Um, and this one mounted up just fine. The steering horn clears the diff. Again, it's close. Not as close as that other long boy, but it's close. But they're both working good. And so, yeah, there's my steering servo dilemma uh, solved for now. I'll probably buy an AGFRC for this. Maybe not a 40 kilogram, like the AGFRC makes smaller, um, not as torquey servos. Because rear steer, you don't really need, you don't really need the thing to really snap around too quick. It's nice, but if you're trying to save money and not spend a crap load of money on these things, I might go with something smaller. Or I might get the same one as the front, because I really like it. We'll see. Who knows? Um, yeah. So... That is, is that everything? That's everything. 
So, upgraded steering servos. Let's look at the front. There you go. Look how pretty she is. I love the way the red servo looks under there. You can't see it when I drop it off the little box I've got here. Uh, you think I would get a little lift mount thing for the RCs because I work on them so much, but I haven't been putting my money into all this other stuff. <laughs> so this is my solder box and it fits the truck. Perfect. Gets it right up off the ground. Super sturdy. So yeah, here we are. Let's turn this on. I just want to show you guys the steering servos real quick. So the, ooh, it's bright Capro. Careful, buddy. Let's turn the lights off. There we go. Oh, I added the lights. I don't know if I showed you guys. Uh, channel 4 instead of channel 3. Channel 3 is no longer the lights. It's actually channel 4. It's like a real light switch. Hey! I love that. The clicky just feels, I don't know, it feels more real. More realistic. So, fun. All right. Steering servo. The front. AG FRC. I'm going to show you that one first. I got this right here. Ooh! So fast. It centers up nice, and what I really like, you don't hear it. You hear it when it turns, but a lot of them will be like making all these weird whiny noises when it's turning and stuff. Watch this. You can't hear it. It doesn't make a lot of noise. And then when you let it go, it centers itself, and it doesn't make noise. So quiet, so strong. And I've already had it in some spots where Look at that. I mean, my God, when you're, when you're up on a rock, you guys know when you can wiggle your front end to get position. I mean, look at that. You can micro wiggle. It's so nice. Now I'm moving the truck in the box just by doing that. Um, some of the servos when you go to recenter, you know, like that little whine and stuff. But I already had this one in some tough, like, spots where I'm trying to turn and the tire's jammed. No issues. Zero. This thing just, when you're on a tight spot, it just goes. And then the back, not too bad. I'll just, I'll sport the, the high tech. Why not? From the, uh, since I stole it from my poor Slash, who now can't steer. Now, you, if you listen, it's as quick as it goes. So it's definitely not as torquey. But, you know, it's reliable. It's, it works. But if you listen really closely, let's see if I can get this to do this. Listen. Hear the buzzing. Not a lot of noise, but it's there. Listen to it. That's all steering servo. And then when I straighten it and get the you know the, the pressure off it, it goes away. So for now it works great. It's gonna you know it's gonna be fine obviously until I get whatever figured out for the back here, but hey, it came in clutch for me when I needed it. Then let's look at the front. I was going to try to sticker these up for you guys. I don't know what I can do to... Hmm. I guess there's really not a whole lot. I was going to put some tape. A lot of people put tape. Oh, you know, I can't tape. Here, you guys stay right there for just a second. Don't move. Stay right here. I'm going to put some... Oh, yeah, here we go. Put some carpenter's tape. Oh, no, I need scissors. I'm coming back, don't worry. Coming back. Come back, come back, come back, come back. I'm back. I'm going to put a piece of tape on the front. I'm going to tape that, 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 piece of tape on the rear. So you can see the overdrive. Hey, magic tape. You guys ready? 30% overdrive in the front. Team Garage Hack. Here we go. Look at how much faster the front tire is moving. I'm literally holding the throttle exactly the same. You can see the rear, see the front. That's 30% overdrive, guys. So you can see how that front would actually pull. You can watch them going together and watch the front pull ahead. Yeah. 
Pretty cool, huh? So yeah. Then eventually the rear tire will catch up, like right about there, and then the front just goes around it again. So cool. So again, I don't know if that's gonna be an upgrade or not. I could I could get it out there and be like, oh my god, this truck is horrible. Because I think it depends on the area. I was watching one guy who had overdrive and his, he had the um these same wild overdrive gears, but he was on like this rock with it was like volcano rock, very porous, lots of little holes. So I think his front tires had a lot of grip and he had a ton of weight on the front. I think that's another issue with this Capra. I don't have enough weight on the front. Um, I was running brass rings in the front, aluminum rings in the back, and then the brass portal covers, the uh, Trio, the ones I showed you guys in another video. So it was 300 uh, grams of extra weight in the front than the back. It wasn't enough. So what I did, I thought to myself, you know, maybe if I get a little bit more weight on all the tires, it'll help with grip. So I did throw brass rings in the back. So now there's brass rings in all four of these tires. And I'm going to invest in the Trio housings for the portals, which are 90, oh God, 97 grams a piece. That'll put more weight on the front. And I think my brother told me that, Richie told me he has a servo mount that goes in the front that's heavier. It's like a brass, it adds like a hundred grams. So I do a hundred on the servo mount, 90, 90, that's 300 by itself basically, plus it's gonna be 400 in the front with the brass rings in the back being brought into the equation. That, maybe that's the ticket. And I think like my brother Patrick was saying, little changes at a time. I'm trying to do that. Like I'm doing little changes, like different tires with some different inserts, you know, like obviously the servos kind of sucked. I'd upgrade those. And like this little $29 thing with the, the overdrive, just trying different stuff to try to get the truck dialed in. I don't want to go crazy and new shocks and new rails and new links and new this and new that and just go and buy all this stuff. Then I don't know what's working and what's not. So I'm really trying to like make a change, take it out and test it. Make a change, take it out and test it. Um, unfortunately, with the J Concepts, I've spent quite a bit of money on tires, but they're so rare to get your hands on. Like the megalithics and the ruptures and the tusks are so hard to find in stock. They like go in stock for a day and then they're out of stock for weeks and then they're back in stock for a day and they're out of stock for weeks. So that when I see them, I buy them because it's like, I want to run them, you know? So I, I've spent a little bit of money on tires. But other than that, I've really liked stock links, stock cage, stock shocks, stock axles, really just trying to kind of go into this slow. And I've made a lot of upgrades, but they some of them have been forced. Like if you think about the motor, it's so bad in this thing. Like a TRX4 motor is totally fine to run stock. It's not anywhere near as horrendous as this garbage is that they put stock in this Capra. Um, so, but upgrading that was like critical. And then like tires, they were really shitty tires on the stock rig. So little, little stuff like that, I wanted to get upgraded right away because I knew it was just going to make massive changes. Now I've kind of got the truck to where it's totally a beast. And now I'm just trying to fine tune what makes it better and what's going to make it a better crawler. And what I've really gained a lot of respect with is the area you live in. Every area... You know, somebody might live in, like, the desert where they're going to have those sandy kind of rocks. We live in upstate New York. It's wet. There's a lot of sleet. Sleet is so slippery and smooth. It's a different kind of rock. Um, there's just... Everybody lives in a different kind of area and does different kinds of crawling. Some people do trailing and crawling. Some people are strictly crawling. Everybody's got a different, like, thing that they're doing. So I'm trying to optimize this truck for what my brothers and I are doing, you know, out back in our backyard course and in our region up here in upstate New York and Vermont, kind of try to optimize this truck for where we live, um, for our crawling areas, because they are all completely different. I've noticed that through a lot of videos, like just you can see how different trucks react in different regions. It's incredible. So I'm going to stop talking. We're at 34 minutes. Um, I'm trying to make it not an hour long video, but I wanted to go through. So if anybody's looking for a front, well, for a, for a steering servo, servo for a crawler, highly, highly recommend this AGFRC 40 kilogram um, steering servo. It's the, oh boy, Let's see if I can get it to zoom in there. A73, what is that? A73B HLW V2. Um, right on Amazon, super, super easy to get. Came in a couple, actually came like in one day. 
um, and really strong. I've noticed a massive difference. It's quiet. You, you just can't be it. Quiet, fast, and strong for 75, 80 bucks. Um, it seems to be pretty reliable. Obviously, you know, time will tell, but it seems like a really good, uh, good steering servo. Hey, the remote's starting to beep. It's telling me to shut the hell up. Okay, I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good one. If you have any questions about any RC stuff, I'm no expert, but I'm definitely learning as I, as I kind of go through the hobby and make upgrades. Let me know in the comments if you have anything particular. If you have any advice for me, let me know. Um, and I'll talk to you guys in the next update. Take care.